Hi, this is Mark Harris, and many of you have asked for a clear understanding of the Creator's Calendar. This video is first in a series that's going to give you the simple and complete truth about this much misunderstood subject. Now, in the next few minutes, when you're done watching this first short video, you will find it so simple that even a seven-year-old could easily understand it and put it into practice. Now, some of you have already learned certain inaccurate things about the calendar and may unfortunately need to unlearn some of those things like I had to in order to fully get the truth about this. In fact, there are literally dozens and dozens of theories and arguments and varying beliefs by many sincere people out there about how the calendar operates and how to practice it. But when you're done here, you'll know this inside and out and you'll know the truth about this all important subject. The Almighty is not the author of confusion, and he's made it very easy for us to understand this. Now, also, some of you will still have some questions after watching this, and that's completely fine, and I will answer any and all of your questions on other upcoming videos. However, I want this video to be kept simple and specifically about how the Creator's calendar actually works. Nothing more, nothing less. Any issues or challenges or questions that you have, I'll be happy to handle on later sessions. But for this video, I want to give you a concise overview on the simple truth of the calendar all in one place. And you can listen to it as often as you want and share it as, with whoever you like. One of the biggest reasons why the Creator even created his calendar was to celebrate his feast days. You'll find them in Leviticus 23. These days are special to him and the days that he wants us to make special as well. In Genesis 1 verse 14, the Creator said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons, for days and for years. So he created these lights, especially the moon and the sun, to let us know what these times and seasons were. This is the word of the Almighty here. In fact, to this day, at least here in the United States, if you want to know the official time, you need to go to the National Observatory. And what they do is to match up what time it is with where the earth is currently lined up with these heavenly bodies. And that's how we tell the time, date, and seasons. So don't let anybody tell you anything differently. The heavenly bodies are to tell us the times, seasons, days, and years. Isn't that what he just said in his word? Now, let me give you the whole calendar in one minute. Sound good? Then afterward, I'll review everything and explain in detail where you can find more information on everything so that you can quickly and easily get started in using the Creator's Calendar. Now my one minute starts right now. First, each day begins at sunset, Genesis 1-5. Second, and you already know this, but there are seven days in each week, ending with the Sabbath, the seventh day of the week. Third, each month starts on a day called in the scriptures the new moon. Simply put, at one time each month, and only one time, after the moon is dark for a few days, the moon reappears as a small sliver on the horizon at sunset. And this day is called the new moon. And this day is the first day of his month. Fourth, in Exodus, the Creator told Moses and us that he wants us to start our years in the spring. Now the scriptures call this first month the month of Abib. This is the month where the vegetation springs forth and everything starts turning green. And of course, we know that the sun gives us our seasons, and clearly Genesis 1.14 told the ancient Israelites that the sun was to give them their seasons as well. So we start this first month of Abib after the spring equinox, when the sun shows us that spring has begun, which generally occurs around our March 22nd time frame. So when the first new moon sliver is sighted in the spring, this day becomes the first day of the first month of the year for us. How's that for a quick one minute overview? So in short, on the first day of spring, or after spring has begun, we look for the next new moon. We do this by sighting the new moon sliver at sunset, right after the time when the moon is dark for a few days. That day becomes the first day of the first month of the year. Then you can simply count each day of the month, day one, day two, and so 14 days later is the 14th day of the first month, which is, by the way, the Passover. Now as soon as the next new moon is sighted, that's the second month. The following new moon is the third month, and so on. So when you get to month seven, the first day of the seventh month is the Feast of Trumpets. Now, you'll find a list of many of these feasts in Leviticus chapter 23. In fact, verse 2, the word there for feast in Hebrew is the same word that's in Genesis 1.14 for seasons. 
That's right. So if you want to know when the feasts are, these seasons or appointed times, then you need to look to the greater and lesser lights in the heavens that our Creator created for that purpose. Now, let's go briefly into a few important details that will help you in actually practicing this. First, let's go into important tool number one, the Almighty's International Dateline. Now, in an effort to keep everyone on the same page and to have all the brethren throughout the world dwelling in unity, our Creator has given us His International Dateline. Just like with the standard time and dates we use in this world, you need an International Dateline to keep everyone in sync. However, the Creator's International Dateline is not in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Of course, it's in Israel, and more specifically, Jerusalem. As we read in Isaiah 2, verse 3, and Micah 4, verse 2, the law shall go forth from Jerusalem. So the new month begins in Jerusalem when the first visible sliver of the new moon is sighted. And then, as that day comes to you, or as it goes around the world at sunset, so does the first day of the new moon. And then, as that day comes to you, as it moves across the world at sunset, so does the first day of the new month. So let's go to important tool number two now, how to sight the new moon. Regardless if you are in Jerusalem or not, you'll want to do this for practice enjoyment and to really get ready for the day. Now if you're in Jerusalem, which is really where you should sight it, then you probably will have plenty of people to help you spot it and walk you through the process. If not, please let us know. And by the way, in times past, when there were no worldwide communications, or if you ever get into a situation where you just can't communicate with Jerusalem, you'll be able to keep it as it comes to you as a secondary backup plan, should that ever be necessary. Sighting the new moon is actually quite simple. Now, you may or may not know anything about the phases of the moon, and that's all right, because all you really need to know is the new moon, or new month, starts with a small sliver of the moon visible on the horizon around sunset. And this is right after a period of anywhere from one to three days or so of a dark moon, which is the time at the end of the previous month. Now, astronomers in modern times accidentally starting to use the term new moon to represent something they call conjunction. And conjunction is when the moon is exactly between the Earth and the sun. At this time, the sun is only shining on the backside of the moon. So it's dark to everyone on the planet for a few days. Now, when astronomers realized that the term new moon was already in use by peoples like the Hebrews and others who really defined a new moon as viewing the first visible sliver, they ended up modifying their term, and now they call it a conjunction, an astronomical new moon. So don't ever get confused with a new moon with an astronomical new moon, which is actually uh, two different time frames. Now, each day, the moon sliver gets bigger and bigger until you have a full moon for a day or two. And then it gets smaller and smaller till it's the size of a sliver again, about as small as when it began, but now it's on the other side of the moon. Now at this point, you'll have one to several days of darkness, which is again the end of the month, and you'll start all over again. Now while this process actually takes approximately 29 and a half days, in practice, each month ends up only really being either 29 or 30 days long. There are always at least 29 days in a lunar month. And that means that on the evening after the 29th day, you will either see the new moon sliver that night at sunset on the horizon, and then the next day should be proclaimed as the new moon, or you won't see the sliver and you'll have to wait one more day. So if you don't see it on the night after the 29th day, then on the night after the 30th day, whether you see it or not, the next day will be declared the new moon and the first day of the next month. On future videos, we'll discuss the different nuances that you'll want to know, but for now, that's basically the important part of important tool number two and the simpleness of how to sight the new moon. Now, before I give you important tool number three, the Almighty has made this so simple that even if you were stranded on a deserted island with no contact with civilization, you could still know his calendar within a very short period of time. And on one of my upcoming videos that I'm working on called The Creator's Calendar, What to Do When You're Stranded on a Deserted Island, I'm going to walk you through how to simply and easily get back on track with The Creator's Calendar in a very short period of time, even if you were knocked unconscious for days, weeks, or even months and didn't know how long you were sleeping. You're really going to enjoy that video. Now, while that video may be really enjoyable and very educational, the reality is that most of us will never need to worry about that situation. 
I'm making that video to show everyone how simple it really is and also to give a demonstration of how easy it is for anyone to follow the true scriptural approach to the Almighty's calendar. So back to important tool number three. So let's pretend that you're starting today and you don't know where to begin. Maybe you're much like the person on a deserted island, but you, unlike them, have access to tools and help. If you were starting today and you didn't have help and you didn't know what day of the month it is, then you'll just have to wait until the next new moon and then you'd be back on track again. Likewise, if you didn't have help and you don't know what month it is, then you'll just have to wait till the first new moon in the spring to get back on track with where you're at in the year. And of course, many of us have another challenge, and that is we don't live in Jerusalem, and therefore we can't sight the new moon there. So to solve all these problems, we've put together a new site for you to help you with these things. And the site is called whenisthenewmoon.com. And here we'll provide you with information that you need to keep you on track with all the believers throughout the world who are following the Creator's calendar. This is all in the spirit of Psalm 133, verse 1. So in short, each day, week, month, and year all begin at sunset. The year begins in the spring, in the month of Abib. So after the sun shows us that spring is here, using the spring equinox around the March 22nd time frame, then we begin to look for the first new moon. When that new moon is sighted at sunset, that day becomes the first day of the first month of the year. Then you can count the days and months to get any date on the Creator's calendar and to keep His appointed times, seasons, and feasts. I hope that this video was helpful to you. If you have any questions, please submit them on the forum or comment on this page, and we'll be sure to include your answers on our upcoming videos in this series. This is Mark Harris. Shalom to you all, and be sure to have a blessed day.